who is the beast of revelation who is this beast of revelation that we are told about all the time during the future tribulation period the, the world will be ruled by a, a godless man who will be presiding over an evil government system the bible associates this end times ruler with a terrible beast in revelation and also in the book of daniel in revelation chapter 13 john sees a night a nightmarish kind of vision uh, of a dragon and two beasts okay dragon and two beasts the first beast comes out uh, comes out of the sea and receives power from the dragon or from satan this beast is a true uh, monstrosity i may call it like that it has 10 horns and seven heads with the uh, 10 crowns on his horns and uh, on each head a blasphemer's name the beasts that i saw re resembled a leopard but i had a field uh, or a feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion Re you remember that let me just read for you here so that you can understand revelation 13 from verse 1 and 2 and i stood upon the sand of the sea and i saw a beast rise up rise up from the sea having seven heads and and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his head the name of blasphemy and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and the and his seat and great authority this uh, beast will be empowered by the by satan and uh, daniel's vision of the beast is 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 just similar in many ways to john's uh, uh, uh vision you remember what daniel saw let me let's let's compare Let's compare Daniel uh, 7, verse 7. And this can show you the Bible is so true. These are people who are almost 600 years apart, and they have the same vision. Look at this. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, a dreadful and terrible, a strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. And it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were there before. And it had ten horns. Is it not sounding the same like uh, the one from John? And I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn. Before whom they were of, uh, there were three of the first horn plucked up by the roots. And behold this horn, in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Is it making some sense? I know this is confusing at some point. But uh, studying both Daniel and Revelation in uh, tandem is, is profitable. And uh, in Revelation, the term beasts refers to two related entities. Sometimes the beast refers to the end times uh, empire. And the seven heads, the and the ten horns indicate that the beast will be a coalition of nations that rises to power to subdue the earth. Okay? Some, some kind of coalition of nations. Do you get my sense? Do you, do you see where we are going when I, when I show you this picture? Okay? So it will be a coalition of nations that rises to power to subdue the earth under Satan's control. Later... The Bible references to the beast in Revelation, picture of an individual, the man who is the political leader and the head of the beastly empire. So the ten, the ten horns you're seeing is like t t ten whatever, what, what, what do we call them? It's like ten, um, ten powerful nations in this whole, you know, this whole kingdom. I may call it kingdom or something like that. And then there will be their leader who will rise up. That is what we, we hear and we and the Bible calls the little horn. Because the beast will receive also, remember, that beast will receive, you, you see, he, he will take control of that whole system. But the beast will receive, will receive what? 
a deadly wound and will be healed out of it. The little horn, the little horn, that, that, the, the one who will be leading that whole empire will receive some wound. It's like somehow he'll be killed and then he'll come back to life again with some technology. I don't know. Just, just go and check. I don't know how it will be. But the Bible says that. And he will be healed from it. Go and read Revelation 13 verse 3. I, I, I don't want to make the video so long. And uh, he will exert authority over the whole world and demand worship that little horn. He'll be leading this, remember? Leading the world nations. And then he'll be a powerful leader who will demand worship. Okay? And uh, he will wage war against the God's people and he will prevail against them for a time. Okay, there'll be war against uh, God's people that he will have some big armies. And uh, you see all these uh, animals that you're seeing, the leopard, uh, the lion and all those kind of things is the representation of what? These nations. So they will be together led by who? The Antichrist and will wage war against the saints. Go and read Revelation 13 verse 7. And, uh, and um, Daniel 7 verse 21. They are talking about that. How they will wage war against the saints. However, the beast's time is very short. According to Revelation 13 verse 5. And Daniel 7 25. He will only be permitted absolute authority for 42 months. That is just three and a half years. That's the only time that he'll be in full control. But of course, before then, he'll be taking control slowly and slowly. In the first uh, three and a half years, he will be doing things but behind the scenes. But now he will take full authority for only three and a half years. And we believe that the beast in Revelation, this beast is the Antichrist. Okay? This is the one who will oppose everything. Everything which is called God, and he will sit in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, I believe he will go to Israel in the temple, because the third temple, there is a possibility that uh, the third temple will be rebuilt, because the seven years of tribulation will be enacted by an agreement, which will be to rebuild um, the temple in Israel. So, there is a possibility that these people will be back again sacrificing to God and praying to God in the temple. And they will sit there and declare that, hey, guys, I am the God now. I am the God now. Worship me. Worship me. Because that one is documented in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. He is called the man of lawlessness. Or also the man doomed for destruction. His doom is already set. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 3, and also in, in Daniel's vision, the Antichrist is the little horn that rises from the head of the terrifying beasts. Okay? He's that little horn. Okay? Who will rise from these world nations? So you have to understand. Go and read Daniel 7, 8. Today I just want to uh, throw out the verses there so that I don't take much time. And when the Lord returns in judgment, you remember, he will come in the battle of Armageddon, when Jesus will come back, he will defeat the beast and destroy his empire. All this empire will be destroyed. Okay, it will be destroyed. And also the beasts, that little horn, that antichrist will be destroyed when Jesus comes back, okay, in the battle of Armageddon. Okay, just go and read uh, Revelation 19. 19 to 20 and also uh, Daniel 7 11 you will see how Jesus will destroy all this and the beast will be cast alive into the lake of fire and the identity of the individual who will become the beast of revelation for now is not yet known people have speculations of different individuals and things like that but it's not yet known but according to 2 Thessalonians 2 uh, verse 7 this man will be revealed only when God will remove the restraining influence 
of the Holy Spirit from the earth. Immediately, okay, he will be now, he will take power and people will be able to understand him. So it is interesting to compare the, the different, um, to compare the different biblical versions of the kingdoms of the world. In Daniel chapter 2, you remember King Nebuchadnezzar. He dreamt that the kingdoms of the world were like a large statue, an enormous dazzling statue, which was a very awesome in appearance. Okay, you can go and read uh, Daniel 2 verse 31. It speaks about all this. And the prophet Daniel later sees a vision of the same kingdom, except he sees them as uh, hideous beasts in Daniel chapter 7. In John's vision, in John's vision, the final worldly kingdom, that is the empire, is portrayed as the, uh, as the God, Grotsku and the uh, Miss Miss Sharpen kind of beast is it's, it's a beast who we can call he's a, a Miss Sharpen one and these passages present two very different perspectives on the kingdom uh, mankind builds man has always seen his creation as um, imposing monuments and the works of art fashions of, uh, of valuable means and things like that However, God's view of the same kingdoms is that they are unnatural monsters. And the beast of Revelation will be the worst of them all. And that's why Daniel sees this kind of uh, vision of this statue. And uh, this statue had a head of gold representing uh, the Babylon kingdom, which uh, Nebuchadnezzar was ruling. And it had a breast and arms of silver. And that represented the Mads and the Persians kingdoms which will come later on after that. And then we had a, a belly and thighs of brass. That is the kingdom of Greece which would come. You see it's diminishing slowly and slowly. And then the legs of iron. That is a Rome. Okay. Rome. Roman Empire. And then the feet will be of iron and clay. This means uh, these are the divided nations of Europe. <laughs> it's happening exactly in the same way. And then after that, a, a stone or a rock will come all of a sudden and hit it from the legs. And it will, you know, dismantle everything. This is the rock of ages. Jesus who will come and dismantle all these worldly kingdoms. And he will establish his forever kingdom. Forever and ever. Jesus is coming. And that's why he keeps on telling us and showing us these things. And uh, with this story of this beast of revelation, you can be able to understand where the world is heading. We are heading to a place where the world is uniting at a very fast rate, preparing the entry of the beasts. The beast is coming to rule. And if you're heading with the world, my friends, you'll be lost. You'll be lost and all that which will happen is that they will make sure that they wage war against you. And whether you say, oh, I don't believe these things or I believe these things, it's okay. The Bible said it. And he said that said these things is faithful and is true. And Jesus said these things and they will work. How can you escape all these things? There's something called the gospel. This is the only way you can escape all these things. What is the gospel? The gospel is basically understanding uh, the good news about what Jesus did and why he did it. Okay? And how he did it. What did Jesus do? The Bible tells us that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. You may ask, why did he have to shed his blood? The book of Hebrews says, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So it was a must that blood had to be shed. So why is the blood so important to be shed? It is because Leviticus 17.11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your sins. 
So the only way you can atone for sins is through blood. You have to take out the blood from the body so that that animal or that creature or that person may die. And when he dies, then now it has happened. So if you take out your blood, then do you get salvation? No. Your blood is evil. Your blood, you're, you're a sinner because we are all sinners. So we deserve to die. So when we die, that's, the, that, that's it about us. We're going to hell. It only needs blood from someone who is sinless. And that 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He was sinless. So that he can atone for our souls. All that you need to do is believe that he did this for you. That is what the Bible tells you. And once you believe, please confess it to God in a prayer. And tell him what you have believed. Just tell him, Jesus, now I understand why you had to die at the cross. You died for my sins. You were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. I receive that payment of sin, that atonement, in Jesus' name. And once you do that, my friends, you don't need to think about all those kind of things and all which is coming because you'll be taken up at the rapture when it happens. Don't, don't fear the beast. Don't fear all this which is about to come because you have a great promise up in heaven. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope it has encouraged you. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like so that uh, it can also be recommended to other people uh, by YouTube and also many people can be able to watch and be able to get the gospel. Also, you can like, you can share the video as well for others to know the gospel and also you can subscribe to watch more. And even the other links in the description which you can go and watch more. Kindly do that. God bless you and be uh, have a good time.